whenever Florida is in the news, you know it's, well, it's literally where Florida man was coined, so take that for what it's worth. But while the world is teetering on the brink of all-out war, it must take something significant to break into the news cycle. And yep, Florida did it. But are the two bills they previously passed actually protecting the innocent, or are they just meant to counteract a liberal agenda? Let's get this out of the way. Liberals, enough with the woke culture. Enough with the cancel culture. It's getting out of hand. There has been significant advancements in equality all across America. When it comes to acceptance and inclusion, we are leaps and bounds better off as a country than we were even 20 years ago. Don't get me wrong. We should always continue to challenge our beliefs and identify inequality when we see it. But for crying out loud, take the win. And to the conservatives, this might be a real hard pill to swallow, but historically and societally, the future relies on progressives. It took our liberal-minded founding fathers to buck the status quo and develop a radical new form of government, which is literally progress, and then place that responsibility to the people. And they understood things will change, progress, and evolve. That's why amendments were woven into our Constitution. But conservatives are tasked with keeping the ship from listing too far. It's never good to go backwards, but it is dangerous to shift norms too fast. With all that said, let's dive into these new laws in Florida. And it might not be the only state either, as a trend is occurring. First was the Parental Rights in Education Bill, or as the left called it, Don't Say Gay Bill. Ironically, nowhere in the bill does the word gay actually show up. It's elevated language. But the right likes to claim it as the anti-groomer bill, which is also extremely incendiary and baseless. So what's it all about? Well, on the surface, the bill is packaged to bolster parenting involvement. It also requires transparency between teachers, parents, and students. That isn't necessarily the issue, and most people can support that as I do. The points of contention revolve around a restriction on discussion about sexual orientation or gender identity, and allowing parents to sue school districts for alleged violations. These sections of the bill are controversial and understandably, but what really exacerbates concern is the vagueness of the bill. It's been somewhat narrowed down to forbidding sexual and gender discussion in K through third grade. But there's also the phrase age appropriate and developmentally appropriate, which becomes a catch all for any would be Karen parent to sue school districts. Don't get me wrong. Parents should have the right to sue schools based on physical or emotional abuse of their child and educators that circumvent standards or teach subjects outside of adopted curricula should face some sort of reprimand. But the parental rights and education bill, though packaged as protection, is rooted in fears of indoctrination of small children into sexual and gender ideology. Though not blatant, nor even intended, there are homo and transphobic underpinnings with the concern that more exposure to this culture somehow persuades others into it. And yes, we've recently seen a considerable increase of young adults and teens coming out and rejecting traditional gender roles and sexuality. But this isn't a product of indoctrination, but of acceptance. An easy way to put this into perspective is left-handed people. For centuries, left-handedness was oppressed, considered taboo, and for a long time prosecuted with death. It was considered by the Catholic Church as sinful and was used to prosecute crimes of witchcraft and dealings with the devil. Even as recently as the 20th century, psychoanalysts thought left-handedness in children was due to perversity and the result of emotional negativism. 
and that left-handed adults were stubborn, rebellious, and rigid. It wasn't until post-World War II that a more lenient acceptance of left-handedness saw a significant increase in left-handed children. Was this because suddenly more kids were born being left-handed, or because there was more exposure to it? No. It's because the stigma against left-handedness dissipated. The kids were no longer afraid to be themselves, and they were no longer forced to conform. That's what we're seeing now. A general acceptance of sexual and gender ideology. The Parental Rights and Education Bill is an attempt to limit this exposure. I personally agree that kindergarten through third grade is way too young to incorporate sex education of any kind. But making laws that expressly forbids any discussion on gender and sexuality can be oppressive. Even at that age, couple that with the vagueness of the bill. Now books that hit at LGBTQ relationships young students legitimately asking questions on the topic, or as simple as a gay educator having a family photo with their spouse on their desk can spark outrage and frivolous lawsuits. Any law that is adopted should be extremely clear and precise as to limit ambiguous interpretation. This bill does not. After this one was passed, Florida doubled down with the Stop the Wrongs to Our Kids and Employees Act, or Stop Woke Act. The name already insinuates some sort of virtue signaling. Again, this bill is packaged as an attempt to make racial issues, well, a non-issue. The argument is that teaching controversial topics like critical race theory or racial disparity, along with private employers requiring diversity and inclusion training, actually evokes more racial inequality and could potentially offend other groups of people. But CRT isn't a normal topic taught in K through 12, and private businesses should not have their prerogatives interfered with by the government at any level. This nation used to set the example, no matter how hard the issue was. But when Germany has no issue teaching their children their absolutely atrocious history, we shouldn't shy away from our own discrepancies. It's how we learn. And yes, some topics can be controversial and some may not be age appropriate, but there is one foolproof way that parents can mitigate what they deem inappropriate without the continued knee-jerk reactions and cry for government intervention. And it's simple. Be more involved with your children's curriculum development. Parents are encouraged to interact with local school boards with things like the PTA, open forums, and open door policies, but there is still very little involvement. If parents did this, they wouldn't be blindsided by what is being taught. They can voice their concerns before the school year and take action early with topics like CRT and sexual and gender identity. And as far as business practices are concerned, there are already laws prohibiting racial and sexual discrimination. There are already laws that protect individual rights on freedom of speech. There are already laws that protect private business dealings and protects private contracts and stipulation to employment. Adding more laws to existing laws in an effort to try and limit the agenda of an opposing party is dangerous and reckless and will only lead to more partisan infighting and law upon law to counteract the law of the law they don't like. It's ridiculous. So it seems the small government fuck your feelings party is okay with their brand of authoritarianism when it's their feelings and their ideology that are involved. But the elitist mantra the left projects is unfortunate because social inclusion of everybody regardless of race, nationality, sexual preference, or gender identity should be embraced and protected. Individual liberty is a core value and foundation of this nation, and it's the militant approach to political correctness without boundaries by the left that only entrenches opposition from the right. 
not by implementing symbolic laws in effort to stifle opposing ideology. We need to stop trying to silence those we disagree with and make an effort to understand why they embrace that position. Actively invoking government to carry out one's position only leads to the opposition doing the same. This arms race of virtue will only continue to deteriorate individual liberties. Compromise leads to tolerance, and tolerance leads to acceptance. We need to be united.